Hey guys, Surgeon here. So you want to make money, but you don't want to put a lot of effort into it. I feel you. I get you. I really do. I'm going to introduce you to something called flipping. Most of you have probably heard of it before, and you may be wondering how do you start doing it. I'm going to be honest and upfront. I am not a professional flipper. I do not make my channel based off of flipping. If you're interested in that, there's plenty of YouTubers who dedicate most of their channel to merchanting and flipping. But what I'm going to do is give you guys a very simple introductory guide on how to do some very basic flipping. So that way you can do what we like to call invest your money instead of just having a cash stack sitting in your bank. So you can actually have your money make more money for you. Before I get into this video... Remember, CC's in the description, Discord's in the description, Twitch, if I stream, which is like never, Twitter, all in the description. If you do like the video, go ahead and like it, and if you want to see more from the channel, go ahead and subscribe. All right, let's go make some money and try to work through this. So what is flipping? In the most TLDR form that I can give you, flipping is buying low and selling high. It's the very basics of merching. The difference between like normal merchanting that a lot of people associate with merchanting is you're doing this almost instantaneously. You're not buying an item and sitting on it in hopes that it goes up in value. That's normally referred to as like a merch. Flipping is more the instantaneous process where you buy something low and then sell it high. That's the process of flipping. So you may be wondering, well, why does no one else do this and why does this work? Well, I want you to think about something. I want you to think about the last time that, you know, you went PVMing or you had a bunch of resources that you want to sell or just anytime you wanted to sell something. So you put it in the GE, you put it in market value and you know what? It doesn't insta sell. It doesn't. So you're like, damn, I really need that money. All right, let me put it back in. Let me drop a 5%. Still doesn't insta sell. God damn it. All right. Take it back out. 10%. Insta sell. There you go. All right. Cool. I got my money. That's how we do this. People are trying to dump items because for whatever reason, they're trying to get rid of tabs. They're trying to get rid of slayer drops. They're trying to get rid of resources. Whatever the case. People are trying to get rid of stuff. And so we can take advantage of that, of just putting our money in the grand exchange saying, I, I, I don't need this right now. But when you feel impatient and want to sell something, I'll be there for you, fam. Say no more. I got you. Your offer will be there. You'll be trying to buy at a lower price, and then the prices will come in, and then you'll buy it at that lower price. Now, you may be wondering, well, how do we sell it at a higher price? We're going to use that same example. So let's say you're going to go for a boss, all right? Let's say you're going to go boss. Let's say you're going to kill some Zor. You're going to get a hilt. It's going to be lit. Oh shit, I'm down like, you know, 20 brews. I need to go buy some brews. So what do you do? You go to the Grand Exchange, you put an offer in for brews, and you bump that up 5%. Doesn't insta buy. Damn it! It's happened again. So you do, you take your money out, you redo the offer, but you bump it up 10%. 10%. Insta sell. Yeah, there we go. Got my brews. I'm gonna make some money. Another failed Sarah trip later. Another death. Congratulations. You got nothing. Okay, regardless of that fact and the harsh reality of life, what do we just example there? People are impatient in both examples. In both instances of selling and buying, people are impatient. People are going to just, I want this now and I don't want to wait for it. So I'm going to bump my buy price up 10% in order to get this. That's how we make money off of it. The idea behind flipping is that it takes time. It takes patience. You're trying to make money off of other people's impatience. So you have to be willing to sacrifice that whole concept of like, I want this and I need this now. Because you don't. It's merchanting. It's going to take time. What you have to do is basically buy at that lower price and then sell at that higher price. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. But first, I want to get into a couple of things, a couple of like requirements. Before we really get into flipping, I want to make sure you guys don't put your money into something that you end up regretting later. So I want to go over a couple of things before we get into that. All right, so the first rule that I'm going to go over with you guys is really more or less like, how do I know what I want to flip? And there's a lot of resources out there for you that, but... Honestly, I was pointing in the direction of one of these sites. There's plenty of sites out there. Use whatever you want. I'm not sponsored by this at all. But it's a site called PlatinumTokens.com. I'll have a link for it in the description. And there's multiple sites like this. But basically what the sites do is it's generating data. It's gathering data. I think Platinum Tokens does it from RS Buddy. I'm not exactly sure on that. But they gather data from you know multiple exchanges, multiple trades that are happening in the Grand Exchange. And it says what the buy price is and what the sell price is for an item. 
That's what the site does. Now, before we go any further, you're going to say, dude, that's awesome. It tells me exactly what I need to buy it, what I need to sell it. Dude, I hear bills calling me. No, stop. No. Always verify your prices. I don't care where you go for your data. I don't care if you go to the OS Buddy client. I don't care if you go to the Korean Exchange site. I don't care if you go to Platinum Tokens. I don't care where you go. Verify your freaking prices because no site is going to be 100% right all the time. So what you need to do is you need to go to those sites and all you're doing on those sites is simply gathering information of what looks like something that could be flippable. And the way that you determine what's flippable is... The way I look at it is two things. You want to look for something that is highly traded, so something that has a lot of volume traded. You don't want to be flipping things like, I don't know, like Super Weapon Poison Plus Plus, where it has like, you know, 500 items traded per day. That is 500 items traded amongst like the thousands of RuneScape players that play every day. Not to mention all the ones that just sit at the GE and trade all day. Like, 500 is not a lot. You want to be looking for things that have at least, at least 1,000 traded volume per day. The reason for this is because if you trade with something, if you try to flip something that has a very low volume, there is not a very large market for that. That makes sense, right? There's not a lot being traded. I'm going to buy a lot of it. Congratulations. You just fucked up the market because you suddenly said, I'm going to take all these and I'm going to sell them a fucking huge profit no it's not how it works it's simple economics you're gonna fuck up the market if you just suddenly go from taking like a 500 quantity traded item and then say i'm gonna do 3,000 of them you just bump that up 600 percent you just mess with the market so much it's ridiculous you want to be looking for something that has a lot of volume traded. You want to look for something that if I invest a lot into this, I'm not going to completely manipulate the prices and mess everything up. I'm not going to mess with the supply in the market. Now, there is a tactic to do that. You're probably not going to have enough money to do that. That's not what this guide is about. I'm just trying to teach you guys the basics here. So number one, you want to find something that has a very high traded volume. You want to make sure that what you're working with, the item that you're trying to flip, is something that people are going to be wanting to buy in the first place. Makes sense, right? The second thing that I want to caution you guys about is item volatility now what the fuck does that mean all item volatility means is how sus to for you hip kids out there how odd does this item look what does the price of this item look like what does the chart of this item look like what does the history of this item look like if you look at an item and its chart in the past like you know two weeks is like fucking bananas and going all over the place yeah stay away from that like the plague because what that means is that the market doesn't know what price that item should be at so how are you gonna know dude i can sell it at this price to sell i can buy it at this price and sell it at this price easy i can perfectly see that no if the market's going crazy the market doesn't know what it's supposed to price that item at so if you see an item that's just constantly bouncing up and down <laughs> dragon hunter crossbow by the way, you don't want to be touching that item if you're trying to make money off of that item. Now, that's not to say that you want a completely stable item like sharks because, you know, everyone needs sharks. Sharks are always in the market. They're always in demand. They're perfect, right? No, you want a little bit of volatility in it. You don't want something bouncing off the walls, but you also want something that doesn't look as flat as, insert dumb joke here, but... You want to look for something that has a little bit of spice of life in it. You want to look for something that has a little bit of room to, you know, move around with. This is where you start trying to figure out what's a good item. And this is where the general rule of thumb that I like to tell people, the general items I like to tell people, is you want to be looking at potions, you want to be looking at armor, and you want to be looking at commodities. What are commodities? Commodities are things that people use every day. So... Items like sharks, chinchampas, brews, again, that falls under the potion category, weapons. There's a lot of things out there that you can use. But when I first started merching, what I did was I would do like rune two handers and rune full helms. They're always there. People are always buying and selling them because, you know, alking and stuff. They're always there. They have a very low buy volume. Like they have a very low trade limit. But you will make money off of them, more than likely. As you get more money, you can start doing more expensive things like Eternals and, you know, Primordial Crystals if you're, you know, a baller or Pagasian Crystals, Armadale chest plates and things. Not right now because Armadale is like super volatile at the moment. 
Um, but bandos, you know, you can start doing those higher ticket items. That's what I mean by volatility. You want to be looking for something that is being bought and sold a lot, but something that hasn't just flatlined in price to where it's just not moving anymore or it's only moving down like sharks. I don't know what happened to sharks, but sharks are suddenly like 600 GP each. Like, ridiculous. But that's another story for another time. In summary for this, look for something that's being traded a lot and look for something that's having variation in price. Do not go after an item that is being traded like twice a day and it's completely flatlined in price. You're not going to have a good time. I promise you that. All right, you've looked up some info. You looked up a couple of websites. You know what you want to go for. How do we find a margin? How do we find out why I need to buy this at? How do I find out why I need to sell this at? So what you're going to do is you're going to type, let's say you did Runeful Helms. This may be bad. I don't know. I haven't looked at this yet. So you, let's say you do Runeful Helms. So you go to Runeful Helm and bump it up like 10%. That's all you're trying to do right now is find what the Insta buy price is. So there we go. All right, 2990. In the old days, you had to like write that down and remember it. And then what you'll do is you'll sell the same item back 10% below market value. And then that'll give you what your Insta sell price is. Now, this is an amazing feature. I don't remember when they did this, but this really helps you visualize what your buy and sell prices are. So now we can look and see, all right, my Insta buy price for my Runeful home was 2990. My insta sell price was 2751. This is where we want to be buying at because there are people selling at this or people are uh, selling at this. We just have to find the people who are doing it. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put in an offer. We're going to bump it up a few GP. I like to make it a round number. Like I like to round up to the nearest five just to help with the speed of buying them. It still takes a while. So don't expect this to be quick at all. But you want to try to expedite it as much as you can without, you know, breaking your margins too much. Uh, let's go ahead and do 20. So I'll buy 20 of these at 755. And as you can see, like I already got one. Someone else was already selling it for 2751. So I got that one already, which is nice. But as you see, they're going to start coming in. There you go. We're popping in now. This is actually, you know, a lot faster. Do not expect this. This is a lot faster than normal. But basically what we'll do is once they've all bought then we'll go ahead and sell them at this price so i will be back uh when those have all sold that took like two minutes i'm not even joking that took like two minutes so yeah maybe runeful homes are really good because they buy really quick so let's say i forgot how much i sold them for so or how much i you know i'm going to sell them for i'll go back and see what price did i buy these at what was the insta buy price so i know that people are going to be buying at this amount because this is what i got sold i got sold a rune helm at 20,990 GP. So I know that someone will buy at that price, but to expedite the process a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and sell these for five GP under that. So I'm gonna go 2985, and then we'll put those in. And then this is usually the part that takes a little bit while when you're trying to sell at a higher price than what's normal, it's going to take a little bit of time. So this is the part that you really want to be patient with. So I will be back hopefully when those all sell. All right. It's probably about like 30 or so minutes later. They sold. There we go. 419, 400. I dropped the price a little bit more from uh, last time just because I wanted to sell them a little bit quicker. They would have sold at the higher price. And I'm pretty confident in that. But here we go. Here's the price. So I'm going to bring up the calculator. Where is El Calculator? Here we are. Bring him over here. Okay. So we bought them at 27.54 and we sold them for 29.70. So we made a profit of 216 GP per Rune Helm. How many do we do? 20 of them. This is a very small merch. There you go. Made 4K off of that. There you go. Is that a lot? No, it is not. But it's a very easy merge to do. It's a very first step merge to kind of like build your confidence in it. That's all we're really. That's all I'm really trying to do is to build your confidence in it. Because I did Runefall Helms the other day, and ah, I lost the buy price on them. But basically, I made like 500 GP per helm, and I made I sold like 69 of them. No pun intended. So I made like a quick 50, 60k, and it took me no time. Like, it took me time outside of game, but in game, it took me like five minutes to set everything up, and I just walked away and it made me a quick 50k. Super comp or super potion sets, for example, I bought them at 4, 4055, sold them at 4267, 
just for some you know quick maths i'll do that for you guys four two six seven minus four zero five five profit of 212 each multiply that by 501 there you go 106k and i did nothing literally five minutes i made 100k that's why you do this this is why you do merching here you want to see what the internal crystals did here you go i remember specifically three mil three hundred thirty thousand minus what i sold them at there you go, 120K, multiplied by two. There you go, 240K, and I did nothing. I literally just put the offer in and waited. Like, that's why you do flipping. It's like minimal time invested, and you can make a decent amount of money off of it. Do the commodities, do your normal things like rune full helms, rune two handers, build your confidence in yourself first, and then start delving into things like potion sets, other potions. I love potions, I think they're great. Um, armor pieces if you've got money those are just a few things again use sites like platinumtokens.com to figure out what items you want to start investing in i did cactus spines i made like 200k off of those as well there's a bunch of things out there you can do use those sites to get ideas for what you can and can't do one last thing i want to mention i'm going to keep this short video's gone on long enough Diversify your flips. Do not invest all your money into one particular flip. This is a normal investing practice and it's a practice of don't put all your eggs in one basket because of something, God forbid, something goes wrong to the one item you've invested in out of like a million items and shit hits the fan, all your money just got fucked. So make sure that you guys are diversifying your assets, look for different items to flip, and then invest into each one of those separately. You want to be diversifying your assets so that way if something goes wrong to one item, it doesn't hurt you as much as if you put all of your money into that one item. So diversify your assets. And that's really all I've got to tell you guys. This is a very beginner's guide to flipping just to teach you guys how to find margins and then what to do. It's Again, flipping is very simple. It's just, it's like farming. It takes a little bit of diligence and a lot of patience. All you gotta do is find the prices, have confidence in those prices, and then just wait. If you guys are curious about a time that you guys should wait before you pull out on an item, give it three hours. If in three hours you've seen no movement on an item, pull out of it. That's my recommendation to you guys. Other than that, that's all I got for you guys today. So I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, remember to go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content for the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Links to all social media is in the description. And if you want, let me know how much I suck. You can put that in the comment section below. All that being said, take it to the end screen. Have a good night, morning, evening, whatever time of day it is. All you Australian and British people out there.